saves coming. The act of saving just before an action that could have a negative effect on your playthrough in a video game. If said negative effect occurs, the player will then reload the save as if nothing happened. I've done it. You've done it. Yes, you have. D don't you deny it. Lydia knows what you've done. I am sworn to carry your burdens. Let's get Fools. going then. It's such a common discourse and one that I've actually pondered a lot. Is save scumming cheating? What if the autosave feature in my game is so bad that dying sets me back? What if I don't want my favorite character to die in a battle? Or what if these problems piss me off so much I just want to go on a rampage? Jokes aside, this is a pretty interesting topic to me. I'm the type of player that loves a challenge, but will often use every tool at my disposal. The quick save and quick load feature being one of them. Quick save and quick load are just hotkeys that quickly save and load your game, instead of having to pause the game and manually do it yourself. It's so easy to press the quick save button too that it just becomes habit at some point. And those habits especially start to form when a game punishes you for not using it. Let me give you an example. I recently made a video about Stalker, go check it out if you haven't already, and while I was playing the game, I'd been doing a ton of side quests. We raided an abandoned ship, talked to a bunch of people at base, accepted a bunch of quests, blah blah blah, and then I am not- Whoa. Oh! I just got insta-killed. Give it to him good. No, dude. What's going on? All the way- All the way back here. Oh my god, I hate that feeling. That was like 30 minutes. Great. So, yes, I did deserve to die, but what was my punishment? I just got sent back 30 minutes of gameplay, and now I have to do everything exactly the same as I did before up until that point again. So, the obvious solution in this case is to save more often to prevent that. But where do we draw the line? After every quest, level, encounter, enemy killed every minute, I found myself naturally saving as often as possible because it was just so insanely easy to press F5 that it became subconscious. Now, when you save this often, every encounter will be finished either through sheer willpower or just luck. It's almost like training an AI to complete a course, it will eventually reach its goal with enough reps. This is just a product of not putting much thought into game mechanics in my opinion. There's some really simple solutions and I'm surprised more game development studios don't implement. Like for example, disallowing saving while in combat makes it so you can't save when an enemy is aggressive towards you. This is the simplest option, but save scumming before an encounter is still viable, it just takes more trial and error. Rather than saving after 1-2 to two kills, you now just save right before you go into a big fight. This also actually has the hidden added benefit of preventing soft locking. Soft locking is typically when you have a save file right as you're dying, stuck in a situation, basically anything that prevents you from making any progress. I think soft locking is actually a pretty fun topic to touch on if a video like this does well, but we'll see. The next simple solution is a good autosave system. Sure, almost every game will have one, but some are objectively better than others. Some games will autosave a game when a quest or mission is complete, which is actually really bad in RPGs since there's much more open-endedness to those. Some will autosave every 15 to 30 minutes, which is okay, but again, can cause soft locking. The best ones autosave for a multitude of reasons, such as traveling to a new area, accepting a quest, still saving every 15 to 30 minutes, and getting to a checkpoint. Notice the emphasis I just put on that word. 
might come up later in the video. This is probably the best way to do an autosave feature. It makes it so I almost never manually save, except for when I'm logging off. If your autosave feature is good, then save scumming becomes so much less enticing because you're no longer encouraged to use the quick save feature. I could go on and on about how other games save correctly, but I kind of want to go over a few that I actually like or different varying save systems. So let's start with Dark Souls. Dark Souls' save feature is phenomenal. It features bonfires that act as checkpoints that you can rest at after exploring a lot. It refills your health, your mana, and all of your health flasks. Finding one is literally relieving, and it always feels like direct forward progress. I just love checkpoints in video games because they're like curated save spots meant to be a tangible goal, but not every game can use checkpoints. Safe state games like Persona are pretty similar and they're okay. I'm not a huge fan because you lose a lot of progress after dying or losing. It's pretty similar to Dark Souls, but much more linear in progression. Plus these games will spread them almost too far apart sometimes. Escape from Tarkov doesn't really have a save system, but the idea of bringing everything from a raid back with you into a safe slash Akir storage is honestly a fantastic progression system that rewards people for wanting to learn the game. These are just a couple of examples and I won't go too in depth on them since this video is already going to be long enough. So again, I'll probably touch on these also in a future video. But I hear what you might be thinking. Yes, I'm in your mind. I know everything about you. You're thinking, who cares? If you save scum, it's a single player video game. You, you can just play it however you see fit. While that is a fair sentiment, I don't think players should be encouraged to save scum. There are better solutions. And save scumming because you're dying a lot isn't even the main problem. So many times, especially in games like Mass Effect, where choices really matter, will I get to a choice and the answer I want to say isn't there, or what the character actually says isn't what I wanted to say at all, leading to an undesired outcome. More broadly, saving right before a big choice in a game where choices matter a ton is also a big dilemma I've faced because realistically, I try to use the dialogue options that I would either most likely say as myself or as my character. But oftentimes, these choices negatively affect the ending of my game. I think it's perfectly fine to have a not so good ending, and honestly, I love bittersweet endings in almost all media. If save scumming wasn't an option in these games, I think everyone would have a much more unique experience. Imagine, if a choice you made killed off a beloved character and you couldn't go back and save them. You would feel something. Unlike many times when I get super attached to characters, I'll often end up trying to get the happiest possible ending, like in The Witcher 3. I grew very fond of Ciri and I didn't want to see her go back to her apathetic absent father, so I looked up a guide on how to get that good ending. Is this what the developers wanted though? Did CD Projekt Red want me to Google how to save Siri and get the happy ending? There's an argument to be made for yes and no, I guess, but I think it's hard to say. At the end of the day, the argument could be made again that you can play a single player game however you want, but I don't think Googling the right answers is what they intended. It's hard for us consumers to deal with the consequences of our actions we already have to deal with it enough in real life. Just the other day, I told my girlfriend I wouldn't treat her the same if she was a worm, and I don't, for some reason, she just left me on red. I, I don't know what I did wrong. But anyways, learning to deal with the consequences of your actions, specifically in video games, might be the best way to experience these dramatic, dialogue-driven games. It will make the times when you get a good ending after a long journey much more fulfilling. Because yes, I was happy to see my good ending that I cheated to get, but I didn't feel all that attached to it. It felt almost like I didn't really earn it. And that's what makes me mad. And you know what I do when I'm mad? I just want to go on a rampage. So let's recap. 
Save scumming often occurs when a game doesn't have good save features, when tough dialogue slash choice options occur, and when you feel like being a little mischievous. I think it is a byproduct of a lazy design, or maybe there's just too much that goes into making a game and some game devs don't even think twice about their saving mechanics, but I digress. So what can we do as players to prevent save scumming? Well, create some boundaries for your save games. Save only after X or after basically just make little goals and then allow yourself to save after. If you die, force yourself to rethink your strategy. If you have to reset X times, go do something else or gear up. At the end of the day, it really is annoying to have to confine yourself like this, but just give it a try and see if you like it. Cope with your dialogue choices, tell your girlfriend you'll love her even if she's a worm, and eviscerate a small village to blow off some steam, and you will be solid. That's all I got subscribe or you'll have to walk on asphalt barefoot on a hot summer day.